Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, we're gonna be specking out a complete software-based switching solution for your church, so let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. Just first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by and on this channel we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member. Links are in the description or below. So I had someone send me a video of another Christian YouTuber who was giving his opinion on feeling that churches should get away from the kind of analog, old-fashioned type of uh, switchers, hardware switchers, and move to something that's completely software-based. Now, again, I'm not gonna say that he's wrong and I'm right or vice versa. Uh, what I wanna do is just kind of offer my kind of take on that if you decided to do that. There are advantages to both, um, but I just wanna walk you through that if you were to call me and you ask me to build something, what exactly would I do? So I will have a link in the description to everything that I pick so that if you decide to go down that path, that option is available to you. So let's go ahead and cut over to the computer. All righty, so we are here on PC Part Picker and let's go ahead and build this system out. now. When we say we're gonna do this completely in software, this means that we're gonna be using OBS, vMix, whichever software platform to be your switching software. So instead of it being like the ATEM that has cameras going into it and then that connects to your computer or your capture card, we're gonna to have to have multiple capture cards inside of our computer that can actually take in as many cameras as possible or whatever you design, desire to have in your system. So what I'm gonna do is actually put it with two different capture cards just to try and cover what an ATEM television studio would be, or you can cut, you know, pick whichever one of these capture cards you want, because I'm gonna do HDMI as well as SDI. And then if you only wanna have four inputs, you can go with that one. I just wanna show the option of if we wanted to be able to do everything that we were thinking about doing, what type of system would I do for that? So first thing we would do is I'm gonna give you two alternate options for this as well too. So for me, I'm call me team AMD or whatever. Um, I just can't really knock the performance of what they're getting with this system. What I would start off with is maybe a 3700 or a Ryzen 7 3700 something like that now again i will tell you right now this is going to be a little bit more expensive than the systems we normally would do but hey this is what you asked for and this is what i would build so i would go with a ryzen 7. now the reason why we want to do this is because this system needs to have enough horsepower to not just handle the stream but also to handle all of the inputs that are coming in and processing each video um, signal that's coming in. So I think the Ryzen 7 3700 is more than enough for that. Um, now for a cooler, I honestly with this would have to put a um, AIO, an all-in-one water cooler on this because it's probably going to get hot um, and we want to make sure that this system lasts for a very long time. So I would go with these, the, this Kraken X53. This is actually something that I have in my system right now that I'm using that you're looking at right now. Um, and I actually started with the Ryzen 7 1700 with that Kraken and it is now on the 3900 and it's serving me well. All right. So from a motherboard standpoint, I don't want to go anything lower than a B550 um, now. So right now I am liking the MSI um, MP, MPG B550. It says it's gaming, but it's not that really big of a deal. Um, really nice system because we want to talk about what specs it actually has on it. So looking at this picture, we have two NVMe slots have more than enough space. We also have a USB-C port that can go on your case on the front. That's really important. 
very good um, heat sinks on the VRMs have space for, I think it goes up to 128 gigs of memory. So this should last us for quite a while. All right, let's add that there. Now for memory, because of all the stuff that's coming in, normally I don't build a system with anything less than 16 gigs, but in this type of system, I would go for 32 gigs of memory with this. And I wanna go with maybe 3600 um, speed. So me personally, I like the Corsair, Vengeance, and maybe if I spell it right, and we're gonna go with the 34, um, 34, <laughs> 32 kit. And we're gonna go with, I wanted to do four, eight, um, eight gigabit modules, gigabyte modules, but we can go with this two, either one. At least that would give us some more space if we wanna go to 64, all right? So we got that. And I don't know why that doesn't give me a price here. Um, let's, Let's go back here and oops, let's do that again. And all right, so let's go with the 16 and we're just gonna double this up. All right. All right, so we're gonna have 32 gigs of memory here. All right, and then for our storage, I don't wanna do anything less for our main drive is gonna be an NVMe. I wouldn't do anything less than a 512, and that is gonna be solely for the application. We, If we're gonna do any form of recording, we don't wanna to touch this drive in any way, shape, or form. And let's say, I like the silicone power ones. They have served me well. And I mean, you could go up to a, um, to a one terabyte if you want, but this A80 I've used multiple times, which is really good. So I'm gonna go with that. Now for additional storage, I would go, normally I put a two terabyte in there, but because we have so many um, inputs coming in, we want to be able to handle this, all of this. So I'm gonna go with a minimum of a four terabyte drive here. And we wanna see if we can get 720, 700, oh, 7,200 in speed, but it looks like that is getting ridiculous in price. So we wanna kinda of be wise with what we're doing. Um, so I don't think we need to go all in like that. So maybe we'll go with the Seagate Ironwolf Pro four terabytes for storage so that should be good now even though this processor is more than enough to handle the live stream by itself we don't want to lean on that so we're going to go with at least a 1660 super so that we can handle the hand off the encoding purely to the gpu and it doesn't really matter um, we can go for price here let's sort this and I'm a nerd, so I want to have all my stuff be the same. We're going for MSI board. So let's go with an MSI um, video card. You could always get something cheaper. It doesn't really matter. So you're looking at as low as 230. Yeah, actually, let's go with that. Let's go with the, the PNY one. And that should be fine. And I doubt the even fan will um, engage on this a lot. Um, compared to games, but you know, you could always go with a bigger, more powerful GPU if you wanted to. I don't think it's needed. If you were going to use the system for video editing, some of the stuff that's being recorded, I would think you might want to go to something maybe a 2060 or a 2070, something like that, or maybe a, a Radeon 56, 5700, something like that, if you um, were going to be doing something like that. But I think this will be a nice entry start. You could always expand this into multiple other things if you wanted to. Now for our case, I am partial to the NZXT H510. That's what I'm using myself. Really like those cases. And we can take advantage of the top USB-C port that the motherboard does support. 
All right, so let's see what our system is. It's saying we need at least 333 watts of power, but we're gonna go over and above for that. So we're gonna at least do a um, 80 plus gold, and let's do at least 650 power supply. And let's see what we get. Uh, and you could probably save some money if you go with the bronze, which I mean, they're fine. And let me just add that in here. Let's go for the bronze instead. And I've actually used this power supply myself and it actually gives us um, a little bit more power. So this is a, and I like EVGA power supply. So this is a 700 watts. So let's go with that. All right, operating system, it's not a problem. Software, um, you know, you would have to throw in the cost of if you're doing, especially if you're using vMix, you're not gonna be able to use the base. You're gonna need to use um, the HD version that gives you more inputs because your capture card that the one we're going to pick is actually going to be considered a different input for every one that we bring in because our software is going to be acting as a capture card. So let's go ahead and add that and I actually have it set aside right here. So for if you're using SDI, we're going to have this Blackmagic DeckLink Duo, which will allow us to bring in four inputs and we have an output. So let me go ahead and copy that link in here. And we're gonna add this to um, custom parts. All right, so we got that in here. And that's $4.95, about $100 cheaper than the ATEM Mini Pro. All right, and then we're gonna add another one in here, and this is for, um, a quad HDMI capture card. Because again, we we're aiming for the ATEM Television Studio, which has four inputs, four HDMI and four SDI. All right, so we got these two cards and let's modify this price here because the actual price is 545. All right, so what else do we need? I mean, obviously you need a monitor. I'm not gonna add that. You can put that in there if you want to. Um, any type of monitor will suffice for that. Um, but one thing, let me go back to my, um, to my video card. Um, depending on how you want to run this, how many monitors it's gonna go to, you might need to get a more powerful GPU, specifically that has multiple outputs. So think, in this, I in this type of setup, I would at least have two monitors one for our streaming software and maybe another one for our live streaming um, results or another screen so you can see what's going on. Um, you can, with um, OBS and VMix, you can set up a, uh, what is it, um, like a multi-view so you can actually click on the sources, makes it a lot easier. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot. If you want to control this, I would also add in a stream deck into this makes it easy to control and you can always go with the Excel if you need to. All right, so we got our controls here. You don't need no headphones, none of that other stuff. And you know, your software can give or take add another $400 if you go with um, vMix. So that system by itself without cameras, without any of all that, you're looking at almost $2,500 and you still, and you know what, let's go ahead and add a keyboard and monitor and all that stuff into it so there's no hiding of what all this is gonna be, all right? All right, now, now at least this graphics card, it has three outputs, so your third one can go to your external monitors. Um, if you need something more than that and separate outputs, you need to go with a, a better graphics card and you know what, why don't we just do that? Let's cut the graphics card and let's add one to where if we wanna do output and stuff like that. And I'm gonna go with a 
Let's actually just go for 2070. How about that? Actually, mm, that's kind of expensive. Let's see, does this one have the outputs that we need? All right, so this 2060 has four outputs, so maybe we'll go with that instead. All right, so that's not bad. It's about maybe about $50 more than what the other one was. So it shouldn't be that more expensive. So right now, for a complete software solution PC, if I was building one, um, it would be around $2,800 for that whole system. And like I said, I'm not using it as an argument point. Some people have a reason. I mean, I liked his video and what he was talking about on his reasoning for that, which I completely agree. Um, I know I like the hardware solution because the price of entry is a lot easier um, and not that much of a complexity, but either one, it doesn't work. As long as you sharing <laughs> the message online, that's all I really care about, whether you can do it for as little as possible with your cell phone or to a massive system like this, it doesn't really matter to me. But for those who wanted to know, this is what I would use if I was building something out that would be a complete um, software solution for your live stream as well as switching inside your church to be able to have all this functionality. So in here, we could have four cameras coming in with this. We can have another laptop or something like that coming in. And that doesn't also, that also includes, you can get rid of some of these capture cards. And if they have NDI, you can bring NDI over that way as well too. So um, link will be in the description for those who are interested in <laughs> this type of setup. Um, if you wanted to have a complete hardware solution for your switching as well as live streaming for your church. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. And I normally never say this, but also share this video for people who might be interested or they might be looking for something like this. So I would like to also thank the patrons who made this video possible. Their names are on the screen right now. And you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month, or you can become a YouTube member that are on the screen right now. And you can become a YouTube member by clicking the join button below this video. Thanks for watching folks. This is AJ and we will see you on the next video later.